Hello, hello, everyone. This is Amanda Grace. I'm jumping on real fast because I will be seeing some of you shortly uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, but I wanted to jump on. I so enjoyed meeting many of you in Michigan. All glory be to God, uh, how he is moving. Hello to everybody jumping on. Hello to the moderators. I'm going to pray right away. So we, my prayer show is already packed. <laughs> we can get into things quickly. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, we come before you. We praise you. You are a mighty God, wonderful counselor, that the government rests upon your shoulders, Lord. We give you all the glory and humbly come before you, Father God, this day, asking you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Father God. Of every way, forgive us, Lord. We have fallen so, so short of you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Your mercies are new every single day. We acknowledge that your son, Yeshua, came to the earth in the flesh in the form of a man. He came as the Passover lamb, as the sacrifice, because we had a debt we could not pay as fallen men. And he walked among us and he taught us and whipped, crushed and pierced. And as his body was broken and he bled, we were purchased back to you, Father God, and we give you all the glory for that. We praise you that your son, Yeshua, rose again in three days, ascended back into heaven and took his rightful place at your right hand where he rules and reigns forevermore. And we declare Jesus is Lord. We honor that sacrifice before you. Father, I invite your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit, Father God, to dwell here right now and to saturate this atmosphere in this room, Father God, in Jesus' name for your glory. I ask in the name of angels, holy angels of all rankings and divisions, including the heavenly host, Father God, to surround the skies here in the land, the perimeter of our property, our home inside and out, Father God, to keep the animals safe as well, Lord to hide us in the secret place and to act as a barrier that in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask blocks out blinds, deafens, muzzles, and mutes. And, you know, lying spirits, spirits of divination, familiar spirits, spirits attempt to impersonate the most high God or Holy Spirit, lying spirit, Christ, Father God, as a filter, so only the words of the Holy Spirit and most high God will come through. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth come forth. Father God, fill me as your vessel, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask with all wisdom, counsel, might, power, reverential fear of the Lord, pinpoint precision, accuracy, and acuity, and prophetic insight and utterance, Father God, this day, Lord. Father God, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter and we are merely the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith. You deserve all the glory, Father God. We are merely your vessels that you operate through. And we praise you for who you are. Adonai, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hello, everybody. I see people from all over the country, from Canada. Hello, hello to you. Yes, uh, Colorado Springs is coming up at the end of September. If you go to thrivetimeshow.com, you can uh, go basically look at the details for Colorado Springs. We are live. Grace is singing in back of me. Wally is up on his perch. He's not here today shredding papers. And so I so enjoyed meeting many of you in Michigan. Praise God, we got, we got to do the prayer and baptisms and pray over so many of you. Uh, what an honor and blessing it is. Uh, we praise the Lord for what he's doing right now. You know, let me tell you something. The road less traveled sometimes is not the easiest road. And traveling is hard. And keep going with your body like that is hard. It is a sacrifice. But we in mind. So I wanted to just talk to you today about a few things because there was a word I had given from the Lord, I don't know, maybe it was within the past month about reaching a boiling point. Oh, also, I wanted to say a very happy birthday to prophetic voice Robin Bullock. Uh, we love him and his family so, so much. And we just wanted to wish him at the happiest of birthdays. I believe his birthday might have been yesterday. Uh, and so we just wanted to just bless him in the name of the Lord, that the Lord will bless him and keep him and and make his face to continue to shine upon him and lift in Jesus name. Okay. So we talked about a boiling point. We are reaching that boiling point right now. Literally, it is going to boil over. You are going to see over the next two months, especially going into the Jewish feasts, things erupt, but always before birth, it has to erupt. So before birth, for many of you out there who have given birth, and I've said before, I've heard it's like blowing a turkey out your nose. Um, <laughs> Right before you give birth, what happens? It is the most painful, 
it is the most exhausting. You have to push the hardest when you have so little energy left from laboring to push. And the doctor says, just give me one more good push. And the, and the woman made that because I can't, I'm too tired. You can, you can. And she musters up every last bit of strength she has. And then the birth happens and all the pain goes. And all the weeping turns to joy. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, says the word of God. So, um, oh, okay. So Robin Bullock's birthday is coming up. I knew it was in the next five days, but we just wanted to make sure to wish him the happiest of birthdays. So um, with this boiling point, this is where the people of God are going to have to stand the strongest stand their ground, put on their armor, and having done all, to stand. And press in in the realm of the spirit, pray in the spirit, petition and bombard the courts of heaven, which is the throne of God, to watch such a mighty move of God in this hour. And mark my words, there will be a mighty move of God in this hour. We are already beginning to see it, but you have to understand the enemy is frantic and he's trying to stop it. And no principality, not the enemy himself, not any human, has, not any force has been able to challenge Almighty God, go up against him and succeed. We see it over and over again in the word of God, the people that did that the principalities behind them that did that were always defeated. Okay. We are fighting a defeated foe already. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. You have to know that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, not on our own. We can't do it on our own. It is under the authority and power that we are given by our heavenly father through Christ Jesus. Because when Jesus Yeshua came to this earth, he always pointed back to the Father. And that's what we should be doing. Always pointing back to the Father. Always giving him the glory. Always looking to him. Knowing he has the power. He is our deliverer. What he has called us to do. Many of you are going to be shifted and, and put in new positions in this hour that you think you are not equipped for, but the Lord has been equipping you for for a very long time. And you're going to begin to realize that. Many of you are being shifted into areas you never thought you would have a voice, you never thought you would lead, you never thought you would be able to stand up in, you never thought you would be equipped for, and the Lord is demonstrating his power through his people because we are to be salt and light on this earth and occupy until his return. So, I would suggest reading the book of Nehemiah in this hour because Nehemiah has so much to do with what is happening now. So much because, you know, Nehemiah left a, pre a prestigious political position serving the Persian king to go help rebuild a city in ruins because pagans and lost people and the Babylonians tried to decimate it. And they thought it was decimated. But God then entered the picture and stirred up Nehemiah. And Nehemiah had the courage to stand before the king and queen and ask for a leave of absence to go help his people rebuild the rooms and the gate and the broken down walls and have the people reconsecrate their lives to the Lord so the Lord could move in a mighty way. And Nehemiah and Ezra were both a part of this. And we're going to get to Ezra in a moment. Ezra was the priest. Nehemiah was more the governing governor leadership. That was his ability he was equipped with. And they came together. And when you come together with your gifts, talents, and abilities, and you operate as a unit in the Lord, you become a force to be reckoned with because of God. Not because of you, but because of God. Because he's driving it. He's leading it. You want God to lead it. God is the best leader, king, general, force, entity, power, governing that you could ever have on your side. If God before you, who or what could ever be against you, that is in God's word. And that is true. And when you've been through stuff with the Lord, you know, it's true. You know, there's a difference between believing and knowing you can believe God is faithful. 
But then when you've been through it, you know he's faithful. And when you know it is such a deep-rooted faith, and that is that kind of faith that moves mountains, that says to this mountain, be lifted up and cast into the sea, and it shall be done. That's that kind of faith that really deeply grows in you, okay? So Nehemiah took a step out in faith, segued out and shifted out of that prestigious political position for manual labor and to rebuild, to rebuild something that had been decimated by a pagan people. I will tell you that Nehemiah is a prime example of leadership. He not only overcame opposition from outsiders, but internal turmoil as well. So basically his opposition came from both outside and from within, both foreign and domestic, like we're seeing right now. He exercised and excelled in administrative, that serving the king, God was doing the prep work. And Nehemiah, he was equipping him. He was training him and he didn't even know it. And then he takes all that God put him through serving the king and he executes a strategy to use half the people for building while the other half kept watch for the Samaritans who under Sanballat, this is all in the book. In and as governor, Nehemiah negotiated peace among the Jews who were unhappy with Persian taxes. He was a steadfast and determined individual. And he accomplished those goals because he submitted to the Lord in all humility. And he allowed the Lord to lead. And he went by the leading of the Lord. You had him, you had Ezra, you had Malachi, all working together as a unit all operating under their God-given anointing, <clears throat> gifts and abilities. And it resulted in the people being encouraged, renewed, excited, and a rebuilding that occurred that the Samaritans and their opposition, both foreign and domestic, thought they could not do. You see, you know why? Because they're fools. And they don't understand the power of God until... It's upon them and they're going to be defeated. You see what I mean? Philippians chapter three, verses 13 through 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Okay, so when you press, when you press, what do you do? Let's talk about a wine press. It applies pressure. And when you apply pressure, it brings forth and causes the grapes to open up. And that juice is what it is at that moment to pour out. So when we press into the Lord, it causes even greater to be poured into us and out. Okay. Forgetting the things which are behind. There's nothing we can do about what's happened in the past, but we can with the Lord leading, do something about what's going to happen now and in the future. So we forget those things that are behind and now we press. I will tell you, in this hour, we have the Nehemiahs, the Ezras, the Malachi's, the Deborah's, the generals, the businessmen and women, the trailblazers, the doctors, the influencers, those in radio, Those even within the government, all coming together right now, those that, that know the wickedness in the government. And they're coming together along with the American people. And if we have to rebuild the wall and rebuild the gates and rebuild the country with a hammer in one hand and a sword in the other, because that's what Nehemiah and his people did. They had a hammer in one hand while they're rebuilding and a sword in the other. So their enemies knew they were serious and they could defend themselves, okay? And if the country has to be rebuilt that way, then so be it. If we have to be called out by God to speak out in a way the Lord has never called upon us to do before, we put on the whole armor of God. We step out in faith. We trust he's going to fill us with the words we need to speak in this hour in order 
for his anointing and power to operate. We speak what the Lord wants us to speak. We become less so he becomes more. Life are in the power of the tongue that is in the word of God. It goes into the realm of the spirit first and resists and activates and pierces and pushes back against the enemy's plans, assignments, plots, schemes, contracts. Almost done here. Okay. 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 Yeah, and you're Okay, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chris is reminding God me do. of the time. And then, <laughs> that's me. Love you. Wally says, hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Wally. Now, in turn, you see a change and a shift and progress in the natural. Now, things in the natural are subject to the spirit. You see? So, we have to fight this in the spirit first and then in the natural. And in this hour, there's going to be a great push. There needs to be a great push. The Lord is going to give a big push. The Lord is going to cause a boiling point. And we're going to see this. And we're going to see some things probably we have never seen before around the time of the Jewish feast. The Lord keeps using the word unprecedented. The last time he used that was something. It is unprecedented. The Red Sea was unprecedented. Fire coming down on Mount Carmel was unprecedented. There was so much in the word of God that the Lord did that was unprecedented. Goliath fallen, unprecedented. We serve a big God, bigger than our minds could ever wrap around. Jeremiah chapter one, verse 10. See, I've set this day you over the nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. That is what we're called to do right now. Now, I'm going to tell you something quickly before I have to go. In the book of Ezra, chapter 7, at the beginning, it names the lineage of the priests back to Aaron. Now, you would think it was just a lineage. But the Lord, I perceive it to be the Lord because I heard it very clearly in my spirit, says, go look up what each one of those names means. And I stopped. And I went and I looked it up. And there is a message in the lineage of these priests for us for today that has been hidden there this entire time. Ezra chapter 7. And this, if you go by the lineage of the priests from Aaron to right before Ezra, okay, and we can even add Ezra, this is what it says. Exalted, strong, God has helped. He has helped us from the serpent's mouth. My father has rescued and Yahweh has proved in has proved his strength or my, or proved his strength through us. The Lord is rising against the rebellious. We are helped by God and promised by God. And with our brothers is goodness. Righteous retribution. The Lord he is our help. If you look at the meaning of every priest going back to Aaron, that's what it says. That's what it says. That is a message for today. That righteous retribution. Look up what retribution means. In fact, I'll do it quickly right now. Because I said, oh, my goodness. Now, I want to read you the official definition, not uh, the Amanda Italian Bronx version definition. Um, <laughs> so this is why I'm doing this right now. Retribution definition. Ready? Punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance for a wrong or criminal act. Righteous retribution. Because vengeance is mine, says the Lord, not ours. Vengeance is God's. And that's why it is righteous retribution because he judges righteously and we praise God. He's merciful with us and he's patient and he's long suffering, even though he doesn't have to be. But there comes a point because God never stopped judging. We have the ultimate white throne judgment, but God is on the throne and he still is the righteous judge. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He changes not. And so righteous retribution. And God is going to vindicate his people in this hour too. 
who have been falsely accused, he's going to vindicate them. That is coming in this hour too. And God is opening doors and he is causing us to have to, in faith, walk through them into positions that are needed right now in the armies of the living God. Positions now, it's time to answer that call. It's time. And so you take it to the Lord, what you can do. Because I'm going to tell you something. Everybody can do their part and do something. The church has left the building. The church has left the building. And now it's time for us to operate in the power of Almighty God and gather as the ecclesia and do what we've been called to do all along. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. And so I think that's where I'm going to end because I have to go. Uh, because we're on a bit of a tight schedule, but I wanted you to see me and I wanted to come on and speak with all of you. Know that we love all of you. I just want to thank everybody for all the birthday uh, well wishes and blessings that you have given. You didn't have to do that. And we just so appreciate it. We praise the Lord. I praise the Lord for another year. I praise the Lord for what he is doing. And sometimes many people from the outside don't understand and want to judge it but they don't understand everything you have to go through internally to continue in the call that God has brought you into. So we praise the Lord. We give him all the glory. Thank you everyone for jumping on. We love you. Keep the faith. And I will be back on I'm hoping within the next five or six days, you will see me back on. Uh, if the Lord gives anything, we can do it sooner uh, from location. So we will, I'm continuing to pray. I've been praying a lot in the spirit. There's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of resistance in the spirit going on right now. There's a lot of activity. So praise the Lord.